St John Ambulance Victoria is a not-for-profit organisation that's existed in the Victorian community for over 130 years. So it's not surprising that the Department of Health and Human Services contacted Melbourne Health asking for a field hospital to be established, but Melbourne Health would then come to St John because of our emergency services capabilities. We received a phone call on Saturday evening, our volunteers were activated, and by 9am on Monday morning, this urgent care centre was up and fully operational. The urgent care centre is set up with 28 bed cubicles and that consists of our consultation rooms, uh, our cubicle beds with assessment equipment as well as our resuscitation bays and HDU bed. In order to keep uh, patients safe and our staff safe, if you present here and you do have a confirmed case of COVID-19, you'll be transferred to our hot zone. Same setup over there, same level of care, except the staff over there are designated to that area and have procedures in place to make sure that everyone's safe. The level of care that we can provide at the acute care centre, it varies. The intent isn't necessarily to bring critically ill patients here, but if a patient does deteriorate while they're with us, we can upgrade them from a cubicle bed and move them into our resuscitation bay and to the point of putting them on life support ventilators. Our workforce consists of about 35 volunteers who provide anything from clinical care, our logistics support and also the command structure that supports the operation. We're working with Melbourne Health to provide support from their senior clinical team. By and large, our volunteers are working on the ground to set this all up and to provide the care to patients. Some of the challenges we had was turning a large empty pavilion into an urgent care facility. To facilitate this deployment, we had to bring 30 stretchers, 30 camp beds, We've got two full sets of our medical trolleys. We have about 12 cardiac monitors, including 12 lead, five lead, and defibrillation. We have ventilators, we have oxygen units. We also have cardiac monitoring, blood pressure monitoring, and point of care blood testing. The cost of our resuscitation bay for us to set up will cost in excess of $100,000, including all the equipment and consumable items that we contain. We don't receive any recurrent funding from the government to provide this care. We solely provide it from our donations. Every member of my team is a volunteer. In about eight trucks, we packed nearly all of our stock, all of our equipment, and then brought it all here, unpacked it, set it all up so that it was all ready to go for the clinicians. As part of that we had to set up different relationships with businesses within the area such as like the dry cleaners to do the seat belts on our furnace stretches. We also had to run around the different stores like Bunnings, Officeworks, Kmart to collect all of the hardware stuff or the stationary items we required to set up with all the signage, all the tape that we needed for the floors. Just because we're setting up in a makeshift area so it takes other considerations to do those things. We have two courier drivers and team to be able to assist if we need to drop pathology things, go and pick up prescriptions from pharmacies, do all the other extra runaround things for extra equipment as required. Coordinating the catering with our Melbourne Showgrounds to make sure that we've got stuff for the staff but also our patients if they come in. And when it comes to actually working within the facility, our team are working in a very designated area. So I have one person in the warm area, one person in the hot area and then someone that can go between the two. Essentially they're there to support the clinicians in getting the equipment out of the green zone or our um, clean zones to help lessen the cross-contamination so we can preserve our stock. There's no other organisation that could have turned around and made this facility happen like St John has managed to do.